From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. We're going to continue something that we were talking about last week and how very, very important it is for our country and for the world right now. And of course, I'm talking about our new president, uh, Donald Trump. Trade wars, Donald Trump takes on the world. Now, he's made a lot of promises, but I know that you will agree that he is trying to fulfill them already. He's pushing ahead for that. Also, the defense minister of Israel says the Israeli defense won't stop until our enemies raise the white flag. They want to win. They will win. And uh, we know that ultimately the Lord is on their side. Mm -hmm. Then going on, American Christians cave on core beliefs. That hurts my heart. And we're going to be discussing that also with our wonderful guest today. But first of all, I just want to say that my husband is uh, doing very well. And uh, he is so grateful for how God is raising him up. He's still in therapy, but uh, sometimes he gets even ahead of it. And uh, the nurse will say, what are you doing? Oh, he's going ahead of her, which is wonderful. And we praise the Lord. Please continue to pray for him. As I mentioned last week, he's enjoying all of your birthday cards, thousands of birthday cards, it seems, uh, coming into the office here. And I take them over to him. He's enjoyed them all. But above all, thank you for your prayers. Keep him in your prayers, will you? And uh, of course, it is a great delight for me to uh, once again have as our guest, Dr. Robert Jeffords. And he is the senior pastor of the 13,000 member First Baptist Church of Dallas. And of course, a Fox News contributor is also a uh, professor at Dallas Theological Seminary. That is a wonderful seminary that has been respected for a long, long time. I forgot to mention last week, friends, he has a beautiful wife, Amy, and uh, two daughters, Julia and Dorothy. And he also has a son-in-law, that's correct? Right. <laughs> he was our youth minister at our church oh, and does a great job. That's wonderful, <laughs> Pat. Welcome back. Well, it's good it's to be with so you. It's so good to have you again. Thank you. And I have to say that it's a pleasure to, to interview you because you have an insight, I believe, that God has really given you, especially in these days with our President Trump. Now, he has made a lot, as you well know, of promises and uh, even been on the covers of many of the magazines. Take a look at this one, if you will, please. Newsweek, trade wars. Donald Trump takes on what? The world. And he's willing to do it. He wants to be where we used to be. Now, going on, executive orders. I'm not going to take time to read them all, but it has to do with the border security and public safety, the environment issues. And then going on here again, presidential memorandums. And it has to do with reducing the regulatory things and construction of Dakota Access Pipeline and all the rest. So very, very many things there. We could go on and on. And also regarding the Mexico City policy, he's really taking on the world. And I be truly believe that uh, God has given us an opportunity to have a president that will stand for America and try to make America great again. I love that slogan. I was happy when he came out with it. Now, Dr. Jeffers, welcome back. Thank you. And do you believe that he is going to be able to fulfill the promises that he's made? Well, I think he's certainly going to try doing, to do so. And uh, I said uh, on the day of his inauguration, during the inauguration sermon, I used the story of Nehemiah and talk about why God blessed Nehemiah. And one reason is Nehemiah did not let setbacks stop him. And I said, Mr. President, you're going to have a lot of setbacks, but remember the test of a true leader is what it takes to stop you. And uh, I said, knowing you, I don't believe uh, you're going to be stopped easily. And I believe that, Rexella. Uh -huh. I believe he is going to keep pushing forward and fulfilling his God-given responsibility to keep our nation safe. 
A lot of Christians get this mixed up. God's given the church one responsibility, and that is to share the good news. God's given government another responsibility, and that is to protect its citizens. And you can't get the two responsibilities confused. Yes, absolutely. And you know, I want to thank the Lord for something, Dr. Jeffers, that the Lord has brought you into this whole story that you have a, a part now. He knows you. He respects you. You were the one that had this service before the inauguration. And how many people there? 300? It was, it was a small closed meeting of 300 people. That's beautiful, yeah. though, that you would be there to give the word and to encourage him. And uh, we need to certainly pray for you also that God will use you there in that administration. And then let's go on to something that really affects all of us. The United Nations Israeli Resolution is not going away. It's not going away. Abbas meets Jordanian king on possible U.S. embassy move. Now, of course, Abbas is the Palestinian Authority. And uh, he says, uh, it's, we're not going to do this. We're not going to have this happen. Well, Hamas will fight embassy move using all means. They do not want that. But I'm going to go to Dr. Jeffers in just a moment and talk about that in length. Iraqis al Sar threatens to liberate Jerusalem if Trump moves the embassy. Now, what are they talking about, liberate Jerusalem? They talk as if it's being uh, kept captive somewhere. But anyway, transferring the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem would be a public uh, thing that will almost bring war over there. The United Nations verse versus Israeli Sanhedrin, the resolution, of course, that's the United Nations Resolution 2334, passed unanimously. And that says that the nation of Israel is almost not a nation. They don't own that land over there. Now, Lieberman, in the next war, the Israeli Defense Force won't stop until the enemy raises the white flag. And, of course, Lieberman is the defense minister of Israel. I am going to go to Dr. Jeffers. And uh, we have talked uh, about this on the program, and I've talked to Dr. Jeffers about it also, that Israel owns the land on which they uh, have their borders. They didn't steal that land, but they own that land. First of all, it was given to them by God. But they also own the land, correct? Well, they do. And they have all the rights to that land because they were there. And this idea that the Palestinians somehow can be linked to the Philistines and they were there first, that is mythology. Remember, the Palestinians, the Arab people, by their own definition, you know, uh, are traced back to uh, the descendants right. of Ishmael. Right. And uh, this is a complete myth that somehow they have uh, a right to that land. But Rexella, the bigger picture here is this is a spiritual battle that's going on. Yes. Satan is doing everything he can to destroy Israel because if he can destroy Israel, Satan can render null and void the eternal promise God made to Israel. And I know Dr. Van Impe has talked about this in Revelation oh, yeah. 12, the picture of the dragon going after the woman who is Israel and the child who is Jesus Christ. This is an eternal conflict going on right now. And we as America, and especially as Christians, want to be not only on the right side of history, but the right side of God. And God says that land belongs to Israel. Absolutely, it does. You know, that goes all the way back to the beginning, you know, where God gave it to them. Well, Netanyahu, of course, we all know who he is, the Prime Minister of Israel, again wants to talk to President Trump about the issue of Iran and some of the things that are going on over there. It's wonderful how they seem to be very good friends. I just pray that that will remain uh, something for the future, that our president and Netanyahu will remain friends and see what's happening and see if we can do something about it. Take a look at this next headline, if you will. Abbas welcomes Paris conference. Now, this Paris conference, the statement called on both sides to adopt the two-state solution. Well, they adopt that, a Paris conference. Oh, that's where they do away with, uh, again, Israel owning the land. 
Hamas bless absurd Paris conference. Well, they say it's not enough. That's not enough. We, that calls for negotiation. We don't want to negotiate. We just want to take it back. And then Netanyahu wants to discuss Iran threat with Trump. He said, I plan to speak soon to President Trump about how to counter the threat of Iranian regime, which calls for Israel's destruction, not just move out, but destruction. And uh, I am so grateful that, as I mentioned, our president seems to be a friend of the prime minister. Do you think that will remain? I do. I believe that President Trump's commitment to Israel is solid because, at the very least, he understands. I mean, Israel is the only friend we really have in the Middle That's East. That's right. The only democracy in the Middle East. And, and so I believe he understands it's vital for our interest to keep Israel as a friend. But, you know, we've got to understand, Rexella, this is not a dispute about land. It's a dispute about Israel's right to even exist. That's right. Uh, Iran wants to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. The Palestinians are dedicated to doing that, and that's why it is vital we not side with the wrong side. You know, it's very easy to give away other people's land. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's easy oh, for yes. us to say that, but God <laughs> says the land belongs to Israel. Well, you know, Israel is really in the limelight right now. Don't you agree? Oh, absolutely. And the Bible predicts that's what it's going to be in the last day. This little piece of real estate is going to be the focus of all of the events that culminate in the return of Jesus Christ. You know, I love that, don't you? The return of Jesus Christ. The first time he came, he was born in Israel. And the second time he comes back, he's going to set his foot on the Mount of Olives. And you know, I was talking to a friend the other day. The Eastern Gate has been sealed for many, many years. One day, Jesus is walking through that eastern gate. Uh, that's the gate on, uh, through which he rode the donkey, the eastern gate going right through into Jerusalem. So they're going to own Jerusalem. <laughs> He's gonna going to make sure, to that's for sure. Well, suicide bombings have peaked. You know, it hurts my heart to see how many, uh, their, even children are being used by these suicide bombers. Take a look. 2016 was the deadliest year ever for suicide bombings worldwide. Now, about 5,650 people died last year. Suicide bomb attack targets Baghdad market. It's, it's everywhere. It's not just uh, here, but everywhere. Going on. 10-year-old girl used as a human bomb in Nigeria New Year's Eve attack. Then ISIS shows preschooler, what? A preschooler? He's not even like five years old, killing victim tied to carnival ball pit. And then Dash militants turn Christian church into Caliphate Children Training Center. They turn that church over to train those little children. Junior Jihad suspected terror cell member, just 12 years old, my oh my. Islamic terror cells shift from Mideast to U.S. Mexican border. Now, you know what? They, they've got us as their target, too. That border is very, very important that the new president has been talking about. But my oh my, we need to pay attention, don't we, to the fact that this is growing, not diminishing, doctor, but it's growing. It is growing, and I think we need to understand, and I get into the trouble for saying this in the media, uh -huh. but this is ultimately a satanically inspired attack. Absolutely. I mean, all false religions are satanically inspired in the sense that they try to deceive people from the truth. But this religion, Islam, that is so intent on destroying the people of God, the Jews and the Church of Jesus Christ is ultimately rooted in Satan's attack. And isn't it interesting that in the Koran, the Koran absolutely links together the Jewish people and Christians, calling them the people of the book. Ah. What they cannot get over is that our book, the Bible says the land belongs to Israel. This is ultimately a spiritual war that we're in. Oh, yes, we are in such... A predicament right now, and a predicament that my husband, Dr. is very, very concerned mm. about, is uh, the fact that our churches are losing our people because they're not getting anything. <laughs> we get letters all the time. I got a letter from a lady the other day who said, well, you're my church. 
I don't get anything at my church anymore, so you're my church. How wonderful that, that we can give you this. But it, uh, it burdens our hearts that many of the churches are not giving the word and helping the people to know what true relief really is in Christ. I'm going to put my husband on right now because he's had this burden on his heart for a long time. Take a look, please. It's not because these ministers are ignorant of the Bible. These are the fundamentals, the evangelicals, the cream of the crop. He said, but they're disobedient to the Word of God. Thank you, George, for saying that, and that is true. God has certain commands in this book, and one is Ezekiel 3, 17 and 19. Son of man, I have made you all watchmen unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou speakest not to warn him, his blood will I require at your hand. Mm. Talking to you ministers, but if you warn them, your hands will be clean. And that's why he again says in that same book, uh, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 3, Blow the trumpet, warn my people, and you guys are so backslidden, you won't take a stand. Oh, he said, this is George Barna speaking again. He said, all they can think of is money and success, but they don't think about the thousands that are dying and are going to die, and they won't say anything. And we got a new denomination out there, the First Church of the Deep Freeze, pastored by Dr. Jack Frost. Some of you ministers use Jesus as the example. Oh, he wouldn't do the things. He wouldn't speak out. Well, I've got news for you. You're reading the wrong Bible. Listen to Jesus in Matthew 23, 15. One, you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one convert. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. He added in verse 33, you bunch of snakes, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? Jesus spoke up, and if you're going to one of these per churches and you talk to the pastor and 90% of them said, we're not going to say anything about all these sins and about all this hatred and all this killing of Christians. Find a good church and a pastor that will stand on the word of God and fight the good fight of faith, 1 Timothy 6, 12. Boy, that is true, isn't it? Fight the good fight of faith. My, oh, my, we need to be getting something when we go to church. Take a look, please, at this headline before we go to Dr. Jeffers. American Christians cave on core beliefs. Now, this article says 60% of Americans agree with the statement, heaven's a place where all people... All people ought to be reunited with their loved ones. Well, this is what happened. I could not believe it. Queen's chaplain, who questioned Quran prayers in cathedral, steps down. He said, I cannot go on with things going on like this in our cathedral. And the Quran verse denied Jesus was son of God, sung in a Scottish cathedral. Well, there you see what's happening over in Europe. Not just here in the United States, but so many of the churches are empty and they're going to see things like this in their churches there. Oh, Pastor Jeffers, we need a revival. Well, we do, but we need some churches to shut down. Oh, and yeah. that's why I would say to anybody out there right now who's going to one of those churches with a namby-pamby, wishy-washy, panty-waisted preacher who won't preach the Word of God, Run, don't walk, run from that church as quickly as possible. Yes. You know, the statistic, Rick Sella, that bothers me most of all is that 57% of evangelical Christians say there's more than one way to God other than faith in Jesus Christ. That's why I wrote my book, new book, Not All Roads Lead to Heaven, yes. to share the most foundational truth of all. And yet the reason 57% of Christians believe that is because of what's being said or not said in the pulpit. I had a friend of mine say one time, a mist in the pulpit is a fog in the pew. Oh, if your preacher yes. isn't sure, don't expect the congregation to be sure. You need to go to a Bible-believing church. Absolutely. That's a very good point. You know, don't, uh, don't, run, don't walk, run. <laughs> very, very good. I want to just draw your attention to something that I feel is one of the most important videos that Jack and I have ever produced. And I really want you to get it, friends, because it has to do with the truth and what needs 
needs to be preached in the pulpits. It's about eternity, eternity, who, where, when, and why. Please take a look at the commercial. Eternity, who, where, when, why, is the most astounding biblical video study ever produced by doctors Jack and Rexella Van Epi. Out of hundreds of predictions prophesied, the greatest and final sign is about to happen when Christ returns as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The event is about to happen, even at the door. Could it occur in 2017 or 18? Be ready. Why? Eternity is forever. Here are seven of the numerous questions answered on this video. One, which of the world's religions is the only one that can get you to heaven? Two, what do most people today believe about heaven and hell? Three, what form did Jesus have before he came to earth, spirit or bodily? Four, what is the rapture and what will happen to our bodies at the time of the rapture? Five, how could the Old Testament saints get to heaven if Christ's blood had not yet been shed? Six, how can we be saved from death, the grave and assured of heaven? Seven, could Jesus return in our generation? Order this all-important video today. Oh yes, don't put it off, there's the 800 number and there is the address. Really you need to have this because it will answer all of your questions, some of the things going on in your mind. I don't think we ever go to a dinner anymore in a restaurant where somebody comes up and asks a question. And uh, much of it is answered on here, eternity, who, where, when, why? We're all going to go there and make sure that you get this, answer many of your questions and your friends. Well, we're talking about the core beliefs of uh, the churches today, and here's what happens if you don't explain to your people. They go out and they get into things that they should never, ever even look at. Take a look at this first article, if you will, please. World, America's deadliest epidemic. And what is it? Drugs. Drugs. And here you see the next one. They're preparing to take the shot. All right, take a look at this next picture, if you will. All right, there he is. He's taking the lonely fight. Oh, my, am I a heroine. And again, court, woman paid for drugs. What? By allowing drug dealer to repeatedly rape her 11-year-old daughter. Oh, that's, how low can you get? The porn paradox views. Uh, commentators will dare to say what many of us see as a moral problem and the consequences. Now, I don't have time, friends, to read all this, but porn in the pulpits and the pews, it, this shows that not very many pastors will even mention the word drugs from the pulpit. So many of them say, 73% say, I'm not comfortable even mentioning porn. And about 40% that he would rather not even have anybody ask him about it. All right, let's go on, if you will, please. Waiting till the wedding. Okay, churchgoers have joined the ranks of cohabitating couples. Some Christian leaders are directing them to a holier path. Get married. I got a letter not long ago from a lovely girl, and she said, well, I was living with this guy. We watched your program. Well, now we're married. Well, good for you. We need to get married. The Lord ordained that. And uh, Pastor, I want to go to you now uh -huh. quickly and say all of this is happening because they don't know what's right and wrong anymore. Well, that's right. You know, I think about the Russian writer Dostoyevsky who said, without God, everything is permissible. We're witnessing what happens when a society tries to live apart from God, yes. and this is the result of it. You're right, Rexella. What we need more than anything is a coming back to God, a great revival. That's not going to happen because of Washington, D.C. A great revival is going to come because of the church of Jesus Christ. And I think we agree we have a limited opportunity. We've yes. been given a reprieve for a little bit, but we need to maximize this opportunity to share the gospel with as many people as possible. I agree 100%. I thank the Lord so very, very much for this administration that seems to be on the side of Israel and seems to be on the side of doing what's right in the sight of the Lord and opening the door for churches to continue on uh, as they should and giving the word as the pastor should. I just want to say, 
Have you ever made your decision? Now, Dr. Jeffers wrote that wonderful book, Not All Roads Lead to Heaven. They don't. There's only one road that leads to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. The cross, he died for you. He died for me. And I'll never forget the day I opened my heart, and I was forgiven, age 17. Oh, I trust that you'll do that. We're going to open that door for you right now and ask you, will you pray this prayer with Dr. Jeffers, saying, Lord, thank you for dying on the cross, the only way to heaven. Thank you for the opportunity to open my heart to you. Will you pray that prayer, Dr. Jeffers? Let's pray together. If this is the prayer of your heart, would you just repeat this prayer with me to God? Dear God, I know I have failed you in so many ways, and I'm sorry about the ways I have sinned against you, mm. but I believe what your word says, that you sent your son Jesus to die in my place on the cross, to take the punishment that I deserve for my sins. And right now at this very moment, I'm trusting in Jesus and Jesus alone, not my good works, but in Jesus alone to save me and to forgive me from all of my sins. Thank you for forgiving me and help me to spend the rest of my days serving you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> did you open your heart to the Lord? If you did, please, there's my address. Write to me. I'll send you this wonderful little booklet. First steps in a new, yes, a new direction. So please, write to me. I'd love to get this into the mail. And you know, you will walk a new direction. You'll lay aside, maybe you're on those drugs, or you're taking some other things that you shouldn't be taking. Alcohol, maybe you're an alcoholic. The Lord can deliver you and walk with you. New path, wonderful new path, first steps in a new direction. And now, oh, eternity. Uh, I just love it. And you can tell I'm very, very excited about it because it has to do with everyone. Who, where, why, whoa. All right, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order eternity. Who, where, when, and why. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I just want to encourage you, please, there's the 800 number, make the call today. We'll get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Eternity, we need to give it to some friends also so that they know. I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. It's better to look ahead and prepare than to look back and regret. How true. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.